This is Porto Chess. I discovered it in the back of my car. In order to make it into competitive, I must prove that it isn't rigged from the start. Stockfish doesn't understand this position, so I must create my own. But what Porto Chess actually is? Usually a chess bot has 8 rows, 8 columns and 0 portals. And here I have 8 rows, 4 columns and many portals. But wait! White King is in danger! Black Queen with the support of the knight will soon finish the entire game, resulting in a crushing defeat for white. Winning this game for black would mean victory in the whole tournament. Because as it turns out, black comes from a dysfunctional family. His father is a retired chess champion and wants his legacy to be passed over his son. However, black isn't a chess master. He loves art. This has created many tensions in the family. Maybe... Maybe if he wins this tournament, father will be proud of him and for the first time tell him, good job son, I love you. But white takes advantage of a portal, capturing black's queen and quickly finishing the game. Black wouldn't be such a disappointment if he had to remember the first rule of portal chess. In portal chess you must utilize portals. These portals allow you to move your pieces horizontally from one end of the board to the other. Now let me visualize this by showcasing a simple game. White starts by pushing a pawn, and let's take a look at it. Of course he controls c5 square, but if you look closer, he can also go out of bounds and influence this square. As the game progresses, black wants to develop a knight. In a normal game, he could only go b6, but portal lets him develop to the opposite side. And now with the pieces in the center, can the queen capture this pawn? If you said yes, you are correct. But take a look here. If the queen could leverage her full range, she would be able to checkmate the white king in this very instance. That's why we set the second rule of portrait chess. When moving a piece through a portal, you are limited to advancing it by only one square. What about the knight? There are three options. Knight is an exception to this rule. Knight moves in a cardinal direction through portal. Knight moves diagonally through a portal. I've selected the third option and so he follows a specific L-like pattern becoming the second most powerful piece on the board. Now if you understand all the rules, try solving this puzzle. Black's turn, find the best possible move. Pretty cool isn't it? Now I also like this idea so I moved it into digital world. If you didn't enjoy this puzzle please stop watching this video. The very first thing I have to do is select a framework. I've decided to step away from Unity for this project. I mean, it surely is a powerful tool, but I feel like it might be an overkill and also they did some questionable things. Instead, I'll try React Native. Okay, React uses JavaScript. I don't know JavaScript. And I must download something called Expo. I followed a tutorial and created my first project. The first thing I want to do is render a chessboard. Rendering something in React is pretty similar to HTML. But doing it in a loop isn't that simple. This is Caleb. Caleb has a lot of videos about coding, so he must be smart. He wants me to use something called mapping. By stealing his code I was able to create chessbot, and then I made two-dimensional array storing pieces position, filling each square with the corresponding item. Now we just have a static picture. I want a game, so I started working on handling the input and getting the pawns to move. The engine is pretty straightforward. It just checks whether a white pawn is on the second row and if the square right in front of it is free. If it does, it does the same thing for the next square. For any other square, I just do it once. And keep track of these possibilities in a second array called Highlights Array, which is filled with true or false values. A true value means the piece can move there, and a false... well, it means it can't. Okay, now let me only check if it works. Fine... Wait, he can't do that! I have to reset the array after each input, and so I created default highlights, filled with false values. This array replaces the highlights after every click, and it works just fine. With that sorted out of the way, I realized that pawns can also capture. And so I've added two new conditions that check if any piece with the opposite color is on the diagonal adjacent square. If there is, change the value to true. Additionally, because it is portal chess, if the pawn is on the third or zeroth column, check the opposite side. And now you can throw your pawns into certain death. Then I went to the gym. After that I tried to make the rooks move. The rook captured her own queen. I logged into chess.com to check whether it is true. It wasn't so I went back to the gym. With newly gained knowledge, conditions work just fine. It is time to create the queen. The most formidable piece. 
She was originally known as the counselor or prime minister. In my country, she's being called a general to this day. Initially, her only move was only one square diagonal. But during the 15th century, she finally took the shape of the modern queen as a combination of moves of the rook and the bishop. And so I've copied the code from the rook and refactored it to mimic the bishop. Why was it so simple? A date state for direction takes three arguments. Imagine them as a vector pointing across the chessboard. Direction is formed by our first two arguments and length by the third. But the length truly is the number of iterations of a for loop where two variables are being created, new row and new column. Essentially, I take the position of the piece and add it to our vector multiplied by the number of iterations. Now, if this square is occupied, I check whether it is an ally or enemy. Depending on it, I set the highlights to true or false and break from the loop. If the new column happens to be out of bounds, I do the same for the opposite side of the board. But here, no matter if it is empty or not, I break from the loop anyway. The last piece remaining is the knight. The fact that he ignores all the pieces in his path and has a consistent moveset made him incredibly easy to implement. And therefore, it was done in the blink of an eye. After fixing some bugs, I had to turn my attention to the core mechanic of chess. Checks. But what are checks? They happen if your king is under attack. Precisely, if any enemy piece could capture him on the next move. You can never allow your king to remain in check. And therefore, any move that leaves or places your king in check is not just considered unwise, it is actually illegal. So, in my game, only those moves that ensure the king remains safely out of enemy's reach will be highlighted as valid options. The first solution that comes to mind involves looping through all possible moves and then once again looping through all enemy pieces just to check if any of them poses a threat. However, for the sake of performance, I conceived a different solution. The king. Why not turn this royal figure into a chess menace? Why? In chess any piece can capture something that is directly in line with it. For example, a bishop can capture any piece that lies on the same diagonal. Now, imagine a reverse situation. Look at this rook. According to the rules, it can capture whatever lies on this square. But, what if it would be another rook? We don't really have to check. We already know that he could also capture him. That means, if pieces are the same, and if one of them can see and capture the other, the other one also can see and capture the other. Now, consider a scenario where the king can mimic the moves of any chess piece. If this king transforms into a particular piece and can capture the same one, it would result in a illegal move. It is like playing reversed chess. The best thing was that I have everything already coded. Now, for every highlight, I create a deep copy of this state, use it to create a new dummy chessboard, and play all the moves for a king. If he can't capture anything, it is a legal move. And after dealing with a few shenanigans, it was finished. Now, I surely have a game, but it looks like shit. First things first, some dark mode. Then I wanted to add a way to count material. In the process, I've discovered the forbidden move. It was banned in 1897 after Captain then I started working on the navbar. I've added settings and created a button for forfeiting the game. Now I only have to call reset function inside chessboard component. With my code's architecture and my beginner's enthusiasm in React that button became my Goliath. I threw everything at it. Context, imperative hooks, calls, even chat GPT. Nothing stuck. It turns out that my code is so terribly written that I can't do it. And so I've decided to do something easier. So I've beaten Sans, did some math and talked to a girl. And it didn't help. So I went to the gym. It did help! The last thing remaining was changing the letters into of actual pieces symbols. And there it was. My legacy. Wait, why is it flashing? 
looks like React renders the component with all of its children when any of values inside it changes. Maybe I should have read that before. The whole logic of the game was inside the chessboard component. Now I realize that I really should have used Unity. I tried moving code, restructuring it, asking ChatGPT to do it for me. Nothing helped. So I've decided to beat Ultra Sans. It never helps. In the gym, I've come to a conclusion that I can't do it. Not anymore. I just want to finish this project, start working on this video, and move on with my life. So I've restored the backup version and left it as it is. If you have a modern phone, it is barely noticeable. Especially if you have a rotating chessboard enabled. I finished it. It was time to publish it into Google Play. After doing some incredibly boring paper, this was ready to be published. If you want to see me doing a chess engine as I promised in the intro, you must subscribe and wait for the part 2. Now I must buy my dream car and tip my landlord, so download all my stuff, like, subscribe and have a great day.